Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about home decor and furniture items that I regret buying. This is sort of a long overdue part two to something that I did like last April or so, where I talked about home decor items I regret buying. And a lot of you saw it, about like a half a million people now have seen that I have purchased a Costco shag carpet, which I definitely, definitely regret. So I thought it deserved a sequel because there are other items that I have purchased that I regret buying. And I thought I would share them with you so that you can learn from my mistakes because I'm specifically going to point out where I went wrong so that we can sort of understand and maybe sort of have some takeaways and some learnings so that I and you can maybe make less mistakes in the future when shopping for our homes. Okay, before I get to the items that I regret buying, let's talk about something that I do not regret buying, which is today's sponsor, Magic Spoon Cereal. Um, does this have anything to do with interior design? No, it does not, but I don't care because I love Magic Spoon. It is like nostalgic flavors that we used to have when we were kids, right? So you know the really sugary, gross stuff that we used to always eat that's delicious, let's be honest. Um, Magic Spoon has sort of recreated those types of cereals, but done with 13 grams of protein per serving and zero grams of sugar. It being January, I have tried to eat a little bit healthier. It turns out my diet of like, cheese, chocolate, and wine that I had in December was maybe not the best diet long term. And so I'm really trying to be healthier in January and Magic Spoon has fit right into that plan. So you can buy a variety pack on their website, which is fruity, cocoa, frosted, and peanut butter. Hot tip is mix the cocoa and the peanut butter together. Amazing. And right now, if you click the link in my description and use code Nick at checkout, you can actually get $5 off of your order, which is amazing. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to those items that I do regret buying. Okay, so item number one that I regret buying buying is, and I've made this mistake so many times, like I have not learned yet. Well, I kind of did eventually, and that is cheap pillows. So you know the pillows where they're like polyester and you just kind of squish them and then they just go bing and they just like completely just go back to their original shape in a second. Like they just like spring back into shape. They're really fake. They're really uncomfortable. You lean on them. They just squish into nothing. These are just really cheap pillows and I bought them because they were really inexpensive. I knew that they probably weren't that great, but I was kind of of the mindset that, you know, in my younger days, a pillow is just a pillow. And a pillow is not just a pillow, right? Like you really can probably save some money on the pillowcase and that's probably fine, but I really don't recommend cheaping out on the fill because the fill is oftentimes what's really going to make for a luxurious pillow that has a really great feel that you can lean on that's gonna sort of sink in and have a little bit of give and it's gonna bounce back, but it's not gonna bounce back like in that really unnatural weird way that polyester does. So I would really stick to high quality pillows. If you are comfortable using down, that's great. I think you can use down if that's okay for you. I know some people, you know, that are have issues with down and that makes total sense. And if that's you, then there are still some really great sort of man-made substitutes for that that are not using down feathers. But I do think down feathers are beautiful and very luxurious if you're comfortable with that. But just really, if you are going to go for something that's not down, really consider going for quality pillows and trying them out. Like really get in there and use them while you're there in the store. It's not really something actually that I really recommend always purchasing online. But if you do, you know, you generally do get what you pay for when it comes to these things, especially on the fill. So I would really take a look at making sure that you invest in quality there. It's really not that expensive in the long term when you consider how long you could be holding on to those pillows. I've had these pillows back here for several years. They still look great and you can really feel the quality in them. They're actually from Article. I really do love Article. I think they do have a lot of great things. Actually, an item I regret is from Article coming up in a minute, but I think these pillows are great and I think there's so many out there that are really beautiful and you should consider investing in quality. Don't make my mistake. Don't buy the cheap crappy pillows that are just never going to be comfortable and honestly are made to be disposable. Okay, item number two on my list of items I regret buying is going to be my jetted tub, which I have never really talked about on this channel, but here goes. So when we redid one of our bathrooms, we looked at the price of sort of a regular tub and then we compared it to the price of a jetted tub and realized that a jetted tub is oftentimes not a whole lot more expensive. Well, at least the one that we bought. So I guess we didn't really kind of look too hard into it and we sort of relied on our contractor who found this like screaming good deal on this jetted tub which is totally fine like it was a great deal so we thought why not we're putting a tub in now's the time it's not a whole lot of money let's just go put it in and see how it goes so the problem is is number one I don't really like taking baths so that was a bit of a red flag for me right from the beginning that was kind of stupid I don't really like baths so why am I really even spending a dollar extra on this stupid tub but anyway I did and it sounds like a jet engine when it goes on we live in a condo building first of all so it's not relaxing because I am constantly 
constantly nervous that someone in this building is gonna bang on the door and go, what the hell is happening in this apartment? Fair question, because it is insane. It like vibrates throughout the entire building. It, it not like the top vibrate. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. The whole wall shake, I feel like, like it's just very noisy and not particularly relaxing. It is loud, it is obnoxious. And I guess I just think that maybe if you are going to buy a Jetta tub, here's the lesson. If you're going to buy a Jetta tub, first of all, are you a tub person? It should be an obvious question, but I didn't ask it of myself because I'm not a tub person and I bought a Jetta tub anyway. And then when you do buy a Jetta tub, think, okay, going to a showroom, experiencing it for yourself. I know it might be weird. Go to like a real showroom or maybe you could even fill it with water and actually see what it's going to look like. Try to do your research. Try to understand a little bit more about how loud it is because some of these tubs like mine are so loud that you never really use them because they're not relaxing. They're not enjoyable. And if you live in a condo building or any sort of shared living space or whatever, it's going to shake the entire house. So I would just be really careful of the noise level when looking at a Jetta tub because they can be quite obnoxious. I'm not going to lie. So maybe yours is different. I hope it is, but I definitely regret that one. Okay. Item number three is my pink colored patio chairs. I know some of you that watch the channel are like pink. Nick, what are you talking about? You hate the color pink. True story. I do hate the color pink. These aren't supposed to be pink. Okay. I don't feel like I'm trying to call out article. Article, I love you. If you're watching, call me. I'd love a sponsorship. But yeah, no, I looked at the website of these chairs. Call me crazy. But I think that the actual color that I received have a slight pink undertone. And I know I'm crazy. Like I know I'm a little bit nuts. Like I know that I'm probably not your average person who looks at the undertones of every piece of furniture they buy. But in my view, these have a pink undertone that was not really well indicated on the website. When I looked at the website, I thought I was getting a brown, neutral, creamy colored chair. And instead I got a neutral cream pink chair, which in my view is not the same thing. They might disagree and that's totally fine, but I just really don't love that there's a pink undertone to this chair because it does not go with the rest of the color scheme that I had planned out for my patio. So the patio furniture that I have is like, I really kind of went funky and bold and went for like blues and yellows and also some grays and browns and some neutrals as well. But none of those are pink. These chairs, whenever I look at them, they always bother me because they don't quite work with the color palette for the rest of the space. And it always bugs me. The lesson here is definitely pay attention to reviews when buying from online. So I love online retailers like Article and Rove Concepts. You guys know that. I love all these guys because you oftentimes can get a better quality item at a more affordable price point because they've cut out sort of the little middleman and sort of the retail that you normally get when you shop at a regular brick and mortar store. But that comes at a cost. And the cost is you don't get to see the items up close and personal before you buy. So I always would say that if you're buying online, proceed with caution. Make sure you look at all the reviews. If there is user photos, definitely pay attention to those and put more weight into those than the like beautiful Photoshopped ones that the brand is putting out there. I would like to add though, that it looks like Article has actually updated their website to reflect this more kind of pinky lounge chair that I received, which I think is a great thing. That's great that they updated their photography, but I actually grabbed this shot from my video that I did about a year and a half ago that has this lounge chair and you can sort of see the difference in color tone. And I think this just really shows that although it's awesome that article updated, you really can't always guarantee with online that you're gonna get exactly the color that you're looking for. So if you're really, really picky, I would just be really careful shopping online because that turned out to be a mistake for me. If you can get swatches, if you can look at those reviews, all that is really helpful to make sure you get exactly what you want. Also, make sure that you look closely at the return policy so that you really understand because returning furniture is not as easy as like returning, I don't know, like a toaster on Amazon. Like that's easy. You don't like it. You throw it back in the box. You ship it back. That's fine. Returning a patio collection to a place like Article is a lot more complicated. So make sure that you're making an informed decision and you're doing the best you can to really understand what you're buying online. Understand the return policy and be prepared to have to do some legwork because although I love buying online, sometimes like in this pink cream patio chair example, it just doesn't work work out. Okay, next on my list, items I regret buying is going to be like microfiber furniture. This is a long time ago that I bought this. I'm really going back here for like a number of years. But when I was younger, I purchased sort of really cheap microfiber furniture. And when I call it microfiber, I'm talking about like basically furniture, like, you know, the cloths that you'll use to like, I don't know, clean your glasses or like maybe even clean an iPad or a computer screen. Yeah, that, but in furniture. Listen, I was young 
budget was tight and I went for something that was definitely on the cheaper side, but this served, I guess, its purpose for the time, but ultimately wore through quite quickly and was not attractive and I never enjoyed it whenever I had it. It was always ugly, it never really worked. And I think I was really sort of attracted, number one, to the price, but also sort of the, what I thought was going to be the superior kind of cleaning and wear and tear and stuff that you get with something like a microfiber. What I have since realized is that there are performance fabrics that are beautiful and luxurious, but also can resist stains and spills a lot better than the non-performance fabrics or things like leather or other materials that, you know, can sometimes be problematic if you were to spill something on it or whatever. There are beautiful materials out there. I didn't really know that at the time, which is why I thought that the microfiber furniture was going to be the best bet for me. I was wrong in the sense that although, yes, it probably can resist spills, which is why you see it so often in like sort of rec rooms or basements where like kids are because it's obviously a lot more spill proof. It's not particularly attractive and it doesn't feel very luxurious. So yes, I saved money in the short term because it was definitely cheaper than what I would find, you know, buying say a nicer performance fabric from a better retailer. But I think in the long term, it cost me more because I just ended up selling it all on Craigslist for probably a fraction of the price and then ended up just sort of rebuying better furniture later. So yes, budget was tight at the time. It's hard for me sometimes to recommend spending a little bit more money when you just don't have it. So it's hard to say it was necessarily like a complete regret because I do understand the financial situation I was in at the time. But I would still say that if I had just sort of maybe bought secondhand, bought used, bought something that was higher quality, probably would have been a better decision that I would have enjoyed those items and those furniture pieces for longer and probably would have been better quality and feel better. And I maybe would have lasted me a lot longer as well, even though it is secondhand. So I think there was other decisions like thrifting and whatever that I could have made that would have been better than buying new cheap microfiber furniture. So ultimately, I think it was a regret. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this kind of shows you that even though I have an interior design YouTube channel, yeah, I make plenty of mistakes. I mean, I could probably make a couple more of these lists if you guys want, because I've made so many mistakes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm gonna link here to part one so you can go check that out. You can see other mistakes that I made like that Costco shag rug and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.